Acetone Amplification Repairs and today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're not going to be doing a repair review video on an individual instrument that we've tackled. Um, we're more going to be doing, I guess you can call it a repair review blog, uh, where we're going to go through some of the stuff that's lying here and the work that's been done on that. And um, just to give you an overlay of all the stuff we're doing at the moment uh, on behalf of clients. So we'll start out with this one which is a beautiful metallic blue Yamaha Pacifica PAC012 this one came in for a setup uh, of course as an extra we had to replace the scratch plate because it had become so brittle over time that it's, it's fractured completely all over the place um, so we sourced this second hand uh, new screws, we've replaced the screws and the springs on the bridge as well and cleaned up all of that hardware there's a lot of rust and grime build up on that and check the electronics, the pods are quite stiff. Um, we're currently busy with the fret work. We've, we've done the frets, leveled and crowned. Uh, we're in the process of shining them. So once that's done, we'll be restringing and, uh, and getting ready for setup. Now this one should be out in the next week or so. That was being done there. Then if we move down the line over here, we find this Court 8870. Um, now for all the 8880s and 8810s that Court has made, there's not a lot of 8870s out there Especially those that don't have active systems um, Which I see is becoming common practice for a lot of the manufacturers now to install active systems Otherwise the guitars don't move This one came in with a headstock broken off Clean over here So we've currently glued that But as common practice by Lali's, we do not just glue and reassemble we will route out two cavities over here and put mahogany strips in for re reinforced support and then we will respray the whole neck clear coated buff and polish you'll see there's another guitar we'll tackle now that's halfway through that process and then we'll begin the setup work on this but uh, a wonderful fine example of quartz uh, acoustic craftsmanship and um yeah we work by factory standard, these guitars, although they have stops and broken off, are not to leave here looking any different than they would hanging in a music shop for sale. Next one on the list is this Araya Ovation style guitar, and uh, that's the active system you hear rolling around inside it, we're still busy with. Um, this one has no model name associated with it, and there's not much on, on the internet about it even on Araya's website um, but just a beautiful dreadnought shaped top um, abalone inlay no sound hole um, but rather these slits and this is the main thing that poses the problem this one's bridge is busy lifting off I don't know if you can see there and the clear coat is cracked all around it so we need to remove the bridge we need to flatten the top the bubble that's formed here in this area and re-secure the bridge and of course repair this lacquer uh, problem unfortunately there's no access to this guitar this, the active system allows you a gap probably about 800 mil you can't even get your hand in there so what we've had to do is um, follow the trend of a lot of the ovations that have got the little leaf holes and, and not a major sound hole is to cut an access point in the back of the guitar and that's what you see over here um, we've cut away this access hole and uh, when we finish doing the repair we will put a strip of perspex in here uh, a black perspex with a center screw to secure it and then of course the client will in the future be able to remove it and access the inside of the instrument for any repairs whether it be to the electronics or other um, as currently there is no way to, to get into this guitar but we bought it, uh, the shop bought it quite a while back, about a year and a half, in its broken state. And uh, we now have a client that is interested in purchasing the guitar. Um, so it's gone into the job, job card role and uh, we'll be tackling the work needed to bring it up to scratch. Beautiful flamed maple top. Um, and as I said, there's not much known about this guitar, uh, except the headstock Araya, our manufacturer. But other than that, um, yeah, we're working towards sorting that. 
Then we have this Yamaha FG410, 12 string acoustic, red mold style. Bridge broke down the middle. Well, there's a, there was a, a large chunk of the bridge missing, gone. Um, so we removed that. We, of course, purchased a replacement bridge for her. Um, and no, I will not be staining it black. I do not stain. I do not stain bridges and fretboards. I'm against it. Um, but yeah, wonderful guitar. Other than that, um, machine heads are not even tarnished. Um, and as you can see by the the wood, uh, the finish on the top, the spruce hasn't uh, decided to come out in any way. Or, or you know, sometimes they form these little ridges where they start coming through the clear cut due to the incorrect humidity they've been kept in. This one hasn't done that at all. So, uh, so kept in the right humidity, uh, we should be able to give this one quite a fair and good setup once we finish uh, replacing the bridge. And of course the client would like us to install an active system in here. We're probably going to go with the, the Cherub G-Tone system. We've installed quite a few of them and at their price point, um, not a lot can touch them. So uh, there is some milking of the clear coat that's taking place, which as a lot of you know, it takes place on the older acoustic guitars. We're not going to tackle that because the only way to fix that is to sand down and respray the instrument, which is not worth it just for that the cosmetic issue. Then we have this Gibson LJ2 American Eagle. This one has come in for a standard setup and uh, brand new out the box, basically. Um, Still got a beautiful, sweet nitrocellular smell to it. What we, uh, you know, this one is fitted with the LR Biggs ghost system. They, it's not called a ghost system. We just refer to them as ghost systems because they, they aren't massive cutouts in the body for the active system. So your tone and your volume are very neatly hidden within the sound hole, battery compartment down there, and your jack output is part of your, your strap mount. The problem being experienced, and we're experiencing it also, is technology moves forward. And so you'll have a guitar that was made in the 1990s, where they install this massive active system in it, and 10 years down the line, as what happens with electronics, something packs up on its sliders, volume knob, or something goes wrong. Of course, the new stuff, everything's gotten smaller, the active systems have gotten a lot smaller, now you need to replace it. So you have this massive surround. We either 3D print the surround to take its place, but it's not ideal. Um, so a lot of the higher end guitars are moving away from the massive system, the massive active system, and they are rather going for these go systems, although they are expensive. LR bags and some of the Fishman products um, are great in terms of that, but they are not by any means cheap. Then, we have this Epiphone EJ212, beautiful jumbo acoustic guitar, or full acoustic, full acoustic, no electric uh, option. Uh, 12 string with Gato uh, gold machine heads, um, beautiful crown inlays, and this one also, once again, is just here for a standard setup. We are busy with the fret work on her. You can see the frets are starting to take shine. Now we've rounded them off, we're just going to bring them to a mirror finish and then we can restring and begin setting up this one. Uh, in all likelihood this and the Gibson and the Yamaha will be done simultaneously and it should be together. Then we have this Epiphone Black Les Paul Studio, headstock broken off. Um, as this guitar and the Court 8870 are both black, we're probably going to be doing them together. The, as I said, this one's been glued, um, like the quarter has been glued, but we don't stop here. We will be routing two channels in with the router and we'll be installing two strips of mahogany to reinforce the joint and uh, then spraying the neck black again, clear coating it, buff and polish and um, set it up. So other than that, the rest of the instrument is in great condition and uh, yeah, should be ready to go in the next two months or so. Um, you know, with these major repairs, headstocks broken off, holes in bodies, resprays, they do take a few months, sometimes up to six months, sometimes up to eight months. And the reason being is that 
we our main objective is to push out setups in the shop and other repairs that can be quoted by the hour and can receive income by the hour. The amount of man hours that goes into these repairs um, cannot be justified by a quote. It's going to cost thousands and thousands and thousands. So to make that quote accessible and affordable, we tackle these as non-priority jobs and they get done on the side until they're at the point where they're ready to have their set up and then we get them out. So they do take a lot longer. Um, because they do get classed as non priority. Then we have this, which is a misnomer, no, no name brand, a resonator looking style guitar, although not a full fledged resonator. The reason being is because this is just a display plate and doesn't actually have the section below it, such as a traditional resonator has. No truss rod in the neck. Um, brass frets. In the Bellini Galatone style of guitars, of course this one we've replaced the machine heads already. The original machine heads were in terrible condition. Uh, one of them was missing a machine head and two of them were bent. So we replaced them all with A&A's made in Korea machine heads. And uh, we're not going to be doing anything to this body. We're going to leave it looking original as it currently is. We're only going to be cleaning up the hardware, replace, we also replace machine head, we need to replace the nut. This needs to come to more of a shine than what we've got it here at the moment. I'm not happy completely with that. And um, then we'll be restringing it and lowering the action. Of course, without a truss rod in this model, it makes it difficult to set the action. But we will get it as best as we can um, for playability. There are still a handful of guys out there that play these guitars and that uh, quite enjoy them. Whereas a lot of others just use them as a, a display piece. Then we move on to this section. Just come in there. Oh, these PA speakers and monitors. I don't have a passion for monitors. I don't have a passion for PA speakers. But there are a lot of them that come in your mixers and PA speakers. Speakers for equal under our amplification section of the shop. So I'll just give a quick overview of these. These came in. Quite surprisingly, the speakers were fine <laughs> and everything else was blown. So we had to replace the tweeter flares, we had to replace the tweeters, we had to install crossovers, replace these grills, which I'm happy that the grills nowadays look as neat as they do on all those massive cross uh, section grills. And then of course we've installed the metal plates, I hate the plastic, with speak on and jack options um, linked in parallel. So these are ready to go out, and uh, I think the client's coming today for them. So that's why they're staying here. Then, moving on, this Epiphone Les Paul Traditional is quite far in its repair already. So this one came in with the headstock broken off, but we will be doing an individual. We have, well, we have got the first section of an individual video of a repair review of the week for this one already so um, this is just an update basically of how far we are this one has had its headstock re-glued and uh, we've put the mahogany strips in you'll see that in photos in its individual video and we've sprayed it we've done a black blend into the red uh, burst basically and we do that to most of the headstock repairs if the guitar is not black because it hides the repair so we blend, we, we spray black and blend it back into the neck uh, and it looks neat. Um, it looks very, very neat when finished. So this one you can see is quite a, a milky doff color. We have, uh, we flatted this one, we haven't finished flattening it, there's still some spots that I want to get out. And uh, then we'll be putting it under the buffing wheel, polishing it to a shine. And once that's finished we will uh, We'll start the setup process on this baby, and then we can get it out. So, this is the level that we work on with the headstock repair. This is what we want it to look like. Um, we don't want you to even see a little groove or anything that that head ever broke off. On this one, we've got a replacement truss rod cover. I can find it here. Although it doesn't have the word traditional on it. So we are looking to have that final printed.
quite small in white. We're not going to be going for the Gibson Les Paul truss rod cover that says traditional because Gibson's parts are priced in such a way it will outweigh the cost of the repair. So we won't be doing that. Um, then, see this is one of the examples of what I mentioned with the Gibson some of the problems we experience in this Yamaha FG X720 um, active system packed up. Now we've installed the Cherub G tone and we've mounted it into the surround of the original but I'm not happy with the way it's been done, it's slightly skewed and we struggle to get it right so we are going to be 3D printing a surround and taking this out. I'm not happy with it at the moment, that's still to be done. Um, the Cherub system comes with a battery compartment and jack unit in one but as the client may have become accustomed already in the past to using this jack output and this battery compartment with the guitar depending on how long they've had it we are going to be linking those two to that at the bottom so that he has the option to either use this or that battery compartment or that jack or that jack depending on his preference and then of course as I say this will be 3d printed because yeah, we're not happy with that but that is the problem being faced is the old system was that large the new one is that large and they're getting smaller every time so that's where we are with that then in terms of banjos we have this four string banjo in your bass we've uh, just it's just come back from respray and uh, there's a lot of heavy knocks and tents in the neck that we filled up and that we sorted out so that we, we play it at least the neck is smooth so this one's ready to be flattered uh, before being buffed and polished we've of, we've of course got new machine heads on order for replacement up there and then you know this is the wonder of 3d printing we've gone a lot into 3d printing a lot of our stuff replacement parts especially on some of the older stuff um, the other day there was a uh, canasta guitar in here um, old canasta and there were some parts on it that you just don't get anymore um, you don't even know where to look because if it's not a Strat or a Tele or something of that nature, then you, where do you start? So we, we 3D print the stuff for them. Um, on this one, we have the situation where these little Z clips that hold the drum in place in the body, 80% of them were missing. Um, of course, they have an engineering firm make that for us, outweighs the cost of the repair. And for me to go and bend little metal clips, I'm not going to get them all to look exactly the same, so it's not going to meet our standard. So, we have 3D printed them in black ABS plastic, um, which is quite endurable, and does the job perfectly. Um, we've replaced three of the inlays on the neck of this guitar that were missing. And after we've done the neck and polished that, then we'll be ready to set this little banjo up and and get it ready to go out. Um, we don't know the name. The name is lost to us. Um, not through sanding of the neck, but we can't make out what it is. Could be a national, although not 100% sure of that. Then something a little different. Kareya, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I've come out with a six string banjo style guitar that has the neck of an acoustic guitar in all its form machine heads, headstock, um, neck radius and so on but onto the box of a banjo with the Remo banjo head cover so this guitar can be played like a normal six string acoustic um, without having to learn any new chords or without having to adapt to a thinner um, V-shaped neck such as some of the banjos have. It's quite a unique thing to have come in here. Um, and this one is of course in for a setup, new restring and he wants the, the skin retention on the top. So, um, so yeah, we'll be, we'll be sorting that out in the next two weeks or so. And just an interesting piece that you really, we haven't seen one before. And don't know when we're going to be seeing one again so then lastly and this is not including the guitars that are currently in what we class as the dirty workshop where we are sanding and spraying stuff there's a few things we can spray at the moment 
and other work, but this is an ovation that came in a few days back. We've done the frag work on it, we just need to polish that. We've got a headstock head chip that we need to repair. And we're not just going to glue this and leave it because that is not our standard. We are going to be clear coating it, buff and polishing it so that you don't see that it broke there or not easily see that it broke there. The rosette is also coming loose and uh, let's polish out a few of these scratches and then we're going to be setting her up. So uh, restring setup, lowering of action, um, this is an ovation celebrity, so not high up in the ovation range but uh, a lot higher than an applause. So. Then lastly, we're going to be just looking at the Lollmeisters, which is, for those of you who don't know yet, our in-house brand of amplifier that is, is, is built completely up by Lollies. Um, these amplifiers are based on the 1955 Fender Tweed amps. Um, you know, I've always wanted a valve amp in my life and I could never afford to buy one, so I bought one. Sure. Me in the shop worked with a few other guys and we built this which as I say is based at its core in design, 1955 Fender Tweed. You have a volume and a tone for input. If you could zoom into the panel there. Four inputs, volume and tone, volume for each, and a tone and a power. That's it. No extras, no fanciness. We are going traditional and vintage in the sense of the way this amp is built. Um, they come out as standard with Celestium Super 65 or Rocket 50 speakers, um, two 6V6 valves, two 5Y3 preamp valves and a 5Y3 rectifier valve. Full valve rectification, no solid state whatsoever. Um, Neutrix jacks, Bones pods and of course these amps carry a lifetime warranty by ourselves um, for 25 years as well as servicing that we'll be doing every year as part of the, 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 the retail price to the amp. So um, we'll be looking after these while they are out there. This is more serial number number one. Serial number number two has been sold already. And number three is currently in the state of being covered. Uh, and we assemble so I can show you what it looks like underneath. Yeah, so this is box number three. It's ready to be covered. Um, yeah, you can see it's chassis. Of course, input and output uh, transformers. And some of the things we've done, we've overwound the transformers. So this amp can take the 6L6 valves, which are high output, with similar voicing characteristics of the 6V6s, without having to modify any componentry. It can also take the 5Y2 instead of the 5Y3 rectifier valve so to play with the, 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 the gain stage and, and how it breaks up. So it's got some room for, um, for playing around. And uh, of course it is wired in the traditional cross-wiring fashion. Uh, minimal hum on these amps. And... Uh, Because it's plate, it's finished, it's rear plate, it will be mounted when finished, serial number number 3, which will be this model, box number 3, and uh, inside here we'll be using the Celestian Dock 50. Now we are able to get um, any speaker on the Celestian range new, so for that reason and for other reasons, if you catch us at the right time, you can specially order what Celestian you'd like in this amp. Um, if you'd like optional extras such as a reverb, a reverb tank, or a send and return loop for a volume or a multi effects pedal, if you so choose, we can work out a quote and that can be added to the price of the amp. Um, for more information, you can go to our website. Um, I'll put a link in the description and then uh, check it out under the page Lollmeister. All the amp specifications are listed there. And um, if you'd like to order, get in touch with us. But, uh, or if you'd like to know more information.
but yeah, that's what we've what we've done, and uh, that's where we end today's video. So